So here we are. And this is the first chapter in the book of Deep and Simple by Bo Lazoff, read by Troy Mason. November 11th, 2017. Those who wish to know the truth take joy in doing the work and service that comes to them. Having completed it, they take joy in cleansing and feeding themselves. Having cared for others and themselves, they turn, then turn to the Master for instruction. This simple path leads to peace, virtue, and abundance. Lao Tzu, Hu Hu Ching. Chapter 1, The Threefold Path. Deep and simple, that's the razor's edge. We can easily be deep, but not simple. Running over the mysteries of life, or over our own problems, emitting a serious, heavy presence as though we carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. This is the path of struggle and confusion. Or we can fall into being simple, but not deep, like many New Age followers, who naively believe that by keeping their mind solely on positive thoughts, they will tune to themselves to never-ceasing abundance, never-ending health and life, good times and happiness. Despite all its slogans and cheerleading, this is a path of fear and denial. Being deep and simple is a very graceful balance which requires no less than all of our commitment, attention, and persistence. This is the path of the sages. This is the balance you and I can study and practice every moment of our lives, no matter what circumstances or environments we must face. <coughs> Long ago, I noticed three practical tips for deep and simple living, which every great tradition seemed to hold in common. Spiritual practice, simplicity, and the dedication to serving. By spiritual practice, I mean we are reminded that reading and thinking are not enough. The sages and saints have left behind many methods which gradually bring about a profound awakening. By simplicity, I mean that we are advised to live modestly and not get too caught up in luxury or possessions, nor to waste our divine energy on too much worldliness. By a dedication to service, I mean that we are encouraged to devote ourselves to the common good rather than merely self-centered success. This book is organized along those threefold lines, although of course they can never be fully separated. The first section, a wide round curve, focuses on the role of spiritual practice in our real day-to-day -day lives. The second section, how little we need, provides a few up-close views of what it takes to get off the merry-go-round of more, bigger, better, newer. Third section, whatever I can, takes a look at dedicating our personal life to the common good. Additionally, I've included 12 practices for a deep and simple life as a fourth section so that, if you choose, you can immediately begin to apply some of the principles and ideas of this book. I have found great value in all of these practices, and I hope you do, too. I love the world's religious scriptures, and I believe with all my heart that they share more similarities than differences. None of them would find fault with the lifestyle of practice, simplicity, and service. None would find fault with the term deep and simple. According to the world's great scriptures, the meaning of life is deep and the rules of life are simple. I hope you are able to use this book as a friendly interfaith resource which does not compete or conflict with your religious views, but rather enriches and enlivens your beliefs and helps you to apply them more effectively in your everyday life. And the Holy Ones promise that we can become radiantly alive, unafraid, shining beacons of goodness and faith. You and I may look at within and find that hard to believe, yet we do believe, even if we stubbornly pretend that we don't. We hold the divine spark in our hearts, and we are aching to let it become a blazing fire which consumes all our foolishness and despair. This ongoing challenge is the human spiritual journey we all share. <laughs>